When my sorrow was born, I nursed it with care and watched over it with loving tenderness. And my sorrow grew like all living things, strong and beautiful and full of wondrous delights. Hi, this is Nidish Vasu and I read writings and poetry from the great saints and sages from across time to help us introspect where we are at in our lives at the moment and to help us evolve and become better students, better children, better parents, better friends, better lovers and better humans. Welcome to a Stereo Tales presentation. You're listening to Sages and the Madman with Nadish Vasu. Thank you for listening into my podcast. This week we continue reading from Khalil Gibran's work. And in each episode we also try to gather insights into the experiences and struggles of Gibran's life that shaped his personality and inspired his work. Let us continue where we left off in the ever fascinating story of Gibran and Mary Haskell. Their engagement was called off because Mary clearly saw that Khalil was not an ordinary man. She understood his spirituality, his difference from other beings and moreover his destiny that lied in far greater things. In her journal she wrote For Khalil there waits a different love from that he bears me an apocalypse of love and that shall be his marriage his greatest work will come out of that his greatest happiness his new full life in another reflection mary said that there was no doubt in her mind that their relationship was permanent she wanted continuity of conscious togetherness how beautifully put and how well understood is that Don't get me wrong the decision wasn't easy on both of them in her journal after their decision she writes again at the door i cried a little while he wiped my eyes saying only mary 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 and as he went he said as well as he could you've given me a new heart tonight upon my tears after i went to bed it was suddenly as if a great peace and light broke and he and i were in it so that i cried thank you god thank you again and again i was so ineffably happy that i have given him up i realize but it has not parted us it has brought us even much nearer together mary was no ordinary woman that much is clear to us she was not just some modern woman but i believe she herself was a deeply spiritual person both of them shared a bond that was deeper than physical or mental compatibility in a letter to mary gibran says i wish i could tell you beloved mary what your letters mean to me they create a soul in my soul i read them as messages from life somehow they always come when i need them most and they always bring that element which makes us desire more days and more nights and more life you don't write letters like this to a muse or a girlfriend there was a connection at the soul level when gibran decided that he would start writing in english it was mary who did his corrections and editions she spent most of her nights to correct his work when she went to visit him in new york he would dictate and she would write when he had an idea and could not articulate she would help him come up with the right phrases such was her dedication and belief in him mary eventually got married to someone else but her connection to gibran remained unchanged she continued to support him and work with him till the very end i can only sum up their love in one of the shortest letters that gibran wrote to her i love to be silent with you mary Today we'll take a look at a fable from Khalil Gibran's The Madman called When My Sorrow Was Born. When my sorrow was born, I nursed it with care and watched over it with loving tenderness. And my sorrow grew like all living things, strong and beautiful and full of wondrous delights. And we loved one another, my sorrow and I. and we loved the world about us for sorrow had a kindly heart and mine was kindly with sorrow 
And when we conversed, my sorrow and I, our days were winged and our nights were girdled with dreams. For sorrow had an eloquent tongue and mine was eloquent with sorrow. And when we sang together, my sorrow and I, our neighbors sat at their windows and listened. For our songs were deep as the sea and our melodies were full of strange memories. And when we walked together, my sorrow and I, people gazed at us with gentle eyes and whispered in words of exceeding sweetness. And there were those who looked with envy upon us, for sorrow was a noble thing and I was proud with sorrow. But my sorrow died, like all living things, and alone I am left to muse and ponder. And now when I speak, my words fall heavily upon my ears. And when I sing my songs, my neighbors come not to listen. And when I walk the streets, no one looks at me. Only in my sleep, I hear voices saying in pity, See, there lies the man whose sorrow is dead. Gibran talks about the delights of sorrow, which he is personified like he often does in his works. He is in love with sorrow. He romances sorrow, he talks about the compassion it elicits. How almost like a person he is in love with, he experiences all the motions with. He talks about his journey with sorrow, the experiences of sorrow within us, birth, growth, evolution and finally death. Sorrow awakens compassion, kindness and empathy within himself. His own emotions are unlocked. He has grown as a person, becomes more understanding and is compassionate. Sorrow has revealed the depths where he has hidden his pain and suffering. And the tales from those depths rise up to the surface. People often relish in others' pain. They also come to understand better their own sufferings. They acquire perspective through the sufferings of others. They thrill in watching the romance between the sad man and his sorrow. Pain is often the root of creative expression. Many a beautiful song were written and composed from pain. And we love listening to such sorrow. When his sorrow died, no one cared. He lost the very thing which made him romantic and attractive. People no longer looked towards him. He no longer deserved their compassion or empathy. His songs were no more deep. At the end of the poem though, Gibran leaves us with him and his inner voice, looking at himself as the man whose sorrow is dead. This I feel depends on the lens through which you look. Could either be his inner self, longing for that sorrow and everything that it gave him, or acknowledging that he has truly moved on and is beyond that which gave birth to his sorrow. What do you feel about this pain, about this sorrow? We've all spent time with sorrow at some time or the other in our lives. How did we deal with it? What were our experiences? Did it help us evolve? Are we better from the experience or have we turned bitter? Have we moved on or do we still yearn to wallow in sorrow? Do we understand others who are suffering at the moment? Are we able to give of our patient selves to those in pain? I'd love to hear your take on this poem and how you've connected with it in your life. Thank you for listening in to this week's podcast. Please try to take some time out in the quiet just before you go to sleep for yourself, loving yourself, appreciating the good from the day and the lessons learned. Please do send out a prayer of healing for the world and for those in need and those at high risk. See you next week and be safe. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please hit subscribe and make sure you share the link with others who'd enjoy the experience. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at themadman at stereotales.com with your thoughts, suggestions, questions, ideas, and more. Please also write in if you'd like to partner with us or if you'd like to feature us on your blog or newsletter. Don't forget to rate our podcast. Thank you for listening and for all your support.
You've been listening to a Stereo Tales presentation.